Hi, uh, today we're going to do some detailing for this doodle that I initially did. Um, I'm going to be using a number two pencil for additional sketching. I'm going to be using my Thule Art Pen, um, size three. I needed a racer as well as a couple of ink tense pencils to add some color. Now the background here uh, was done using um, ink tents, a wash with ink tents using um, a uh, paintbrush, a watercolor paintbrush. Um, so I'll be using that as well. And to sharpen the um, ink pencils, I'm going to be using my Tagal sharpener. And the, um, the links for everything will be in the description below. But you use whatever you have uh, available. I like using ink tents because you don't really need a lot of pencil for it to go a long way. Of course, every time you use a wet medium, you have to allow, allow it to dry. But that's okay, because it's worth the wait. So the color I used before was mustard as it's 1700. This one here is poppy red and that's 0400. The uh, presser I'm using is very light because I, I said you don't really need a lot of ink tents to get the color payout. Well, maybe a little bit much on the red. Well, let's see. So once it's dried, it's pretty permanent. And every so often you can dab it so you don't have that much color. Okay. And I have still a little bit on the brush so we can do that and then sometimes you can go in with your ink tents directly onto something is wet already And this one is Shiraz 
0600. It reminds me a little bit of magenta, but a much browner version of magenta. Magenta. As you can tell, I'm um, still working on relearning how to speak, and certain words are more problematic than others. So bear with me. So it's, even though the um, this is hugely different than this, but it matches the cap of the ink pencil. So it's always a good idea to um, swatch your pencils, any medium actually, that way you know what you're actually getting. And a good thing with ink tents is once to try, it's permanent net and you can don't have to worry um, about lifting the layers beneath, which is for me it's really good. So so while it, that's drying, I'm going to go in and work on some of the detailing. As with most of my stuff, I don't know um, what I'm going to do, but it's like an exploration as opposed to, gee, let's do that beforehand. I'm going to go with a smaller nib. So we're going to try O2. Okay, good. So much better. I like to um, change up the thickness of my points on my pens because I think that when you do that, it um, gives their various parts of it um, more emphasis. When I paint um, or apply color, I generally go for um, a light mid-tone and a dark. The way, reason the, being is when you do that, there's a lot more variety. Likewise, when you ink in, go forth um, uh, heavier uh, medium and then for me I like to use my Signo 0 0.8 from Univol. It's really a f fine point.
another thing I like to do is see I'm going up to the uh, watercolor or in this case ink tents so what I like to do is incorporate it into my doodle and you can do it in decreasing space it's like there's a space here and a, a space here so I can include um, a little bit of doodle here and likewise okay And I like to add a little bit of organic patterns in here. And uh, this one with the dots, like this is called stippling. It's a great way to add dimension and subtle shadows. It's kind of tedious, tedious, but again, the payout is again, I think, well worth it. I can simple all day long and be a happy camper. So just give it a try and see if you like doing it. And with do it this over here to take I to tie in these three. Ideally, you want to um, tie in your doodles by incorporating um, basically an odd number. Like this is one, or this is one I started out. And then this was the second, and this was the third. Unless you want to have your doodle be all stippling or any element in your doodle. So, Let's see if this is dry enough. It is, it is, okay. You really want to allow the, um, the wet of your medium, in this case, ink tents, to dry completely. But this is enough.
I'm going to stop using the um, number two and go for my really fine one. and bounce around the uh, noodle from section to section if that's how you roll don't wor worry if you prefer to work in complete a section at a time go for it and remember this is noodle your doodle, you can do whatever you want. I like spirals in my doodles. It represents to me uh, the journey of life that we have to go through. Follow our own path, as it were. And the um, the swirls, you can do it that way or reverse it. And sometimes I like to do an outline for something that separates it from another part. So, for example, this is one thing, and if I do an outline, and don't worry if your lines are a little wonky, it doesn't matter. So, again, I'm going to outline it and give it another outline. And give it some more texture by doing a little hatching. And then a little cost hatching to give it a bit more depth. I'm going to use this pattern, which is basically a C, and a circle, and then a back root C, and then round out a little bit. Going back to the Thule art, because if you have 
seen my other videos, like, you know I like arches, so.